nearly 15 years, the city of Minneapolis has relied on gunshot detection technology known as ShotSpotter. The system is made up of acoustic sensors capable of pinpointing where shots are fired and then alerting police. And over the years, the city has coughed up millions of dollars for it. And tonight, Fox 9 investigator Nathan O'Neill is asking if it's worth the price tag. It's technology touted by Minneapolis police for more than a decade. If you're going to commit a crime in uh, North Minneapolis, there's a significant chance that it will be detected by the technology we're using. Gunshot detection technology paid for with millions of taxpayer dollars. Do you think it's worth that? No. As the city of Minneapolis faces tough questions about its future in policing and the technology it relies on. Over the past couple of years, ShotSpotter has been activated thousands of times in different parts of the city. You can see the hotspots in the north and south of Minneapolis. But our months-long investigation has found those activations rarely lead to any evidence of a gun-related crime, and it's even more rare they lead to an arrest at all. In Minneapolis, it was a summer steeped in violence. Three children shot in separate instances, all in a span of days. One of the two children who died like was six-year-old Anaya Allen. My granddaughter was the type of kid that you would instantly fall in love with. <laughs> Anaya's grandfather, K.G. Wilson, clings to those precious memories. My granddaughter, Anaya was a light, a shining light, just love, the definition of love. On May 17th, little Anaya was in the back of her mom's car when police say she was shot in the head, an innocent child caught in gunfire. It's become heartless, ruthless, careless. That night, shot spotter sensors detected at least four gunshots in the area of 35th and Penn Avenues. Though today, the case remains unsolved. Anaya's killer, unknown. Across certain parts of North and South Minneapolis, shot spotter acoustic sensors are strategically placed to monitor gunfire. The system detects, locates, and immediately alerts police of the gunshot. But our investigation has found in Minneapolis, when police show up, they often don't find any evidence of a crime. The Fox 9 investigators dug through thousands of records obtained from the Minneapolis Police Department. The data documents all shot spotter activations from January 2020 through September of this year. The data reveals during that time, MPD responded to shot spotter activations roughly 8,500 times. The data also shows about 80% of the time, officers documented no evidence of a gun-related crime. And only 32 activations total led to an arrest. That's less than 1% of the time. That percentage there is, 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 that's insane. That's crazy. You know, that's not, that's not enough help. In recent months, Jay Stanley of the American Civil Liberties Union has questioned the usefulness of ShotSpotter in communities across the country. I think the big concerns here are that we don't know how effective it is. We don't know how often it's sending police officers into communities on high alert uh, for no reason because of false alarms. ShotSpotter is currently used in 100 cities nationwide, but because ShotSpotter often limits access of its data to the public, very few independent studies have ever been done. So we shared our research with the ACLU. That does raise questions about the overall um, worthwhileness and the balance between the positives and negatives of this technology. Uncertainty is what ultimately led the mayor of St. Paul, Melvin Carter, to reject bringing shot spotter technology to his city when the idea surfaced back in 2019. I think it would be a mistake for us to confuse buying one particular toy with reducing gun violence in our community. And I think that's an important mistake that we have to refuse the temptation to go down. Today, Minneapolis remains the only city in Minnesota with an active contract with the California-based company ShotSpotter. Item number one is authorizing a contract with ShotSpotter Inc. for support and maintenance of ShotSpotter's gunshot location system. In fact, the city of Minneapolis has repeatedly extended and expanded its contract to the tune of more than $2 million. Aye. Gordon. Aye. Kano. Aye. Right. Aye. Fletcher. Minneapolis police declined an on-camera interview with the Fox 9 investigators, but released a lengthy statement 
calling ShotSpotter a valuable tool that helps officers quickly locate victims in cases where shootings might go unreported by the public. And in a handful of cases, ShotSpotter has also proven key in the criminal investigations. For example, in September 2010, ShotSpotter detected gunfire connected to the murder of a man in North Minneapolis. At the time, MPD Brass credited ShotSpotter with helping to pinpoint surveillance video of the getaway car, a red Dodge Intrepid, which led to the capture and conviction of Christopher James Hayes for first-degree murder. Again, our research found in most cases, ShotSpotter activations do not lead to arrests, a discovery we took directly to the company. If you're looking at ShotSpotter activations overall, and only a small percentage of those are actually leading to arrests, is it worth it in your opinion? ShotSpotter can be effective in saving lives, reducing gun violence, and enhancing community trust, where the outputs of arrests may not be the goal. But it's clear that some people may believe that, you know, justice and arrest and accountability for gun violence is the goal. Well, I think the goal would be deterrence. We'd like to stop the shootings before they even happen. So far, there has been no independent study commissioned by the city to review how effective ShotSpotter is for Minneapolis. Do you think there should be a review? I, I think there should be. City Council member Andrea Jenkins represents Ward 8 in South Minneapolis, a known problem area for gun violence. I think we have to try to use as many different mechanisms and technologies as we can. She tells the Vox 9 investigators reshaping the future of policing in Minneapolis must include smart use of lean resources, especially with current understaffing of the police force. I think there may be some value to ShotSpotter. However, um, it probably is one of the least efficient ways to prevent gun violence. But for some families who have suffered the ultimate loss to gun violence, like K.G. Wilson, they expect more. They expect results and they expect accountability. What does justice look like for you? Arrest. Arrest. That would be justice. While it may be hard to quantify exactly how beneficial ShotSpotter is for Minneapolis, city leaders should be asking those questions, including whether it's making Minneapolis any safer. Minneapolis police declined our request to sit down for an on-camera interview to talk about ShotSpotter, partly because of understaffing issues and partly because no one wanted to go on camera. But they did send us a pretty lengthy statement in response. We're going to put it online for you to check out for yourself at fox9.com. For the Fox 9 Investigators, I'm Nathan O'Neill.